Hi guys, today we're going to talk about how to make an art journal. So we're going to create this and it's going to be in the kind of the junk journal style. But a lot of the papers I've used in here are sketching papers and canvas papers and all sorts of different um, substrates that I wanted to try different, you know, mixed media techniques and things on. So this is going to be a two part video and I think it really could have been broken up into an entire week. So we are going to just kind of look through, I'll show you what we're sort of creating here. And then we are going to do the whole process from start to finish. So I'm going to take you to what, what I wanted to do with this was make an affordable you know, junk journal or art journal. So using things that you can find at Walmart, Target, Michaels, shops that are close to you, things that you may already have. So I went and tried to buy a lot of this uh, from those shops just to make sure that everything was available. And then I have used some extra, you know, fabrics from my stash, but most of this is from these shops. And what I wanted is that we can create an art journal specifically from things that we probably already have around the home if not just a couple of extra supplies from these local shops so i'm going to take you through the entire process straight from going to the shops and actually just having a look around to uh, picking the papers and each signature and why i chose them and um, and then we will bind the whole thing together and then in part two, we will finish off the cover and some extra pieces of sewing and pockets and things like that. So to start with, I'm going to show you just a flip through of this one on the left. So this is not what we're making today, but this is kind of what inspired it. So I started creating this huge, it's almost probably 11 by 12 or something like that. I started creating just this really huge junk journal with all my favorite things and then I wanted to be able to do a tutorial about it and make it, you know, with things available to you. So I'll just kind of let you watch, um, you know, have a look through here and kind of see the things that I was creating. Hopefully next year on Heirloom Locks we'll do a lot more in this journal. And I think that the one we're creating today I'm going to use for December daily. So I just created a... Um, uh, a collection of journals over on Heirloom Lux and I am thinking to use one of those for January for my birthday month. So I'm thinking that the one we'll use today will be the December daily one. That means that we can, uh, you know, get a lot of artwork and things for the month put in there. But the one that I am showing you through now, you can see that a lot of it is hand sewing. So at the time I didn't have a sewing machine and I wanted to be able to show that you can create some of these things without a sewing machine. So a lot of this is um, using, you know, hand stitching and slow stitching and I really love it. And you can see there's like different little pockets and flip outs. So here is like a little bit of a t-shirt and some little fabric snippets that I've slow stitched together with some of my favorite Gumnut Yarns wool. And so that's another thing we'll talk about materials for this project but if you have any old uh, you know cushions or um, t-shirts or you know clothing with nice emblems or pockets or anything that you want to use this is a great project to salvage those pieces and use them So I haven't actually bound this one together yet and one of the things that I want to add is some of the handmade uh, ledger paper, the aged ledger paper that I create and I have a tutorial for that over on Heirloom Lux and also some of my printables, I really love them. I created them so that I could use them and then I wanted to make them available because you were asking for them. So uh, here you can see this is a hand stitched 
belly band so it's just again fabric snippets that I have sort of created frills and ruffles and just created a belly band there with that so some of this is a little bit unusual for an art channel and it sort of flows into my other sort of journaling and planner channel but I think you can see from this that it's all fairly connected in my mind um, creating the journals creating the sketchbooks doing art memory keeping and you know it, hand embroidery uh, is part of my creative process as well so these are some printables freebies from Pinterest and you can find them on my printables page on her brave heart uh, on Pinterest So you can kind of see there that I am using a collection of different papers, uh, of different materials. And so those are the things that you want to start thinking about with this journal. So it's not just a regular sketchbook. We will do some more of those just with, you know, cotton watercolor paper. Um, and you can see here, so we're in Walmart. That's the um, watercolor paper I'm talking about. We've got the... Uh, embroidery thread the darning needles everything here that you need to create this journal will be at Walmart I like to get the needles with the really big eyes as well so um, and then here you can see some zipper pulls I was thinking about getting one of these as a charm so there is some blanket uh, trim here that I use the bias blanket binding I don't get all of this, but I'm just showing you what I'm looking at. So here is my favorite cotton paper I'm also talking about, you know, from uh, Walmart. And I love to use this for sketching as well. So I think we're at Michael's now and I'm just kind of looking through these things. These are some other things that you could get or you might already have, you know, to use. And now we're actually at Target. So I really enjoyed doing these shopping kind of shop with me's and uh, taking you through where I'm looking in the shops. Now, I think some of these things are not great for clothing, but as far as, so you can see here, I'm just looking on the clearance rack here for things with shiny sequins. So this is what I end up getting. And um, yeah, you might have like some of these t-shirts with some of these things that you could, or you know, uh, used and you could cut those off and use them. Or you might already have, uh, you know, in your stash sequins or things that you can use. So I'm just showing you like a whole range of different uh, materials that are available. And then you can see here as well, I'm looking for color schemes. So you can see this holographic comes up everywhere and I'm really enjoying it. And I'm just looking at the different uh, shapes and the colors. So my sister's usually over in the makeup aisle. So I was looking at those palettes there. And if you have old palettes, they're really good for watercolor palettes as well. So you can see that I'm looking around at a variety of things. And even the cards here are giving me uh, inspiration and ideas for colors. And I'm also looking at, do I want to use any of these, like maybe as the signature you know cover in a journal as well or you could even create a little just a little pamphlet stitched journal from one of those cards so hopefully you can see here there's a variety of things that you can use and this is kind of what I ended up with back at home so I did get a gift bag here 
and I really loved the top of the candles and that kind of color scheme like right here I really loved that so I wanted to use this as a like one of the signature covers I think you can see here I was looking for the tissue and then right just up in the corner right there I spied it and I was like I really like that so that came home so hopefully by the end of this you'll be able to see that a lot of these things um, can be bought quite inexpensively you may already have at home and you can like reuse them and we can create this really beautiful journal so the first thing we're going to do is, and I think they're stickers from Michael's, but the first thing we're going to do here is take a gift bag that I had, I think, from Christmas. So it's just an old, like a leftover gift bag. This is from Sugar Paper LA, which I really love their uh, products. Quality is really nice, and I think we got this at Target uh, the you know the year before for Christmas. So anyway, you, I'm just pulling everything out of this and folding it over and creating one of the signatures for inside the book. So this will be the cover and I'm trying to decide here, do I want to cut that off or should I just leave it as a pocket at the back and I can kind of um, cover up those, the torn parts. I think I actually have um, just left it like that as well. So you can see here that some of these things you probably already, most of these things you probably already have. So uh, this is some canvas paper. So I wanted to use this because I'm interested to try some different products on it and different types of paints. So you can see here that I'm just tearing them in half and then folding them in half and I'm starting to create the first sort of little pamphlet or the first part of the journal. And for this whole journal and for this whole process, I, I could have, you know, made something really quickly and sped this up, but I wanted to take my time and just make it nice and um, show you all the different parts of the process. And I actually filmed this nearly probably a year ago, but I just haven't uploaded it yet. So um, this is the, um, this is actually one of my favorite sketching papers. So it's a really large pad from Michael's and I'm just cutting, I'm just tearing those out and um, folding them. And then I'm also folding a little inner pocket into them. So you can see at this point my colour scheme is very tone on tone. So uh, for this signature I'm doing apricots, peaches, sort of beige, pink beiges and off whites. And so I had these uh, little kind of things from Michael's and so I'm trying to decide do I want to use one of those on there and I had this silk ribbon and so I am just creating sort of a little double bow and then I end up putting the uh, butterfly in the middle of it. Okay, so when I finished that, uh, I actually didn't like it on the the other um, you know paper I thought it was just too similar and it sort of blended in too much so I actually put it on this holographic paper and I really liked it on there you can see that I really like subtle contrast so it'll be in textures and slight color shifts and so then I was thinking about putting this one on here but I ended up taking this off as well and using some lace, which I actually think I even take off and I just use one of my printable lace pockets. So I think at this stage, I was pretty impatient to start to try and get this all together. Uh, and I was also thinking as well that you could create a really nice, just a journal. You could use this for a, an art journal 
just with an old paper bag and like a gift bag or something and you know some old papers and make a really beautiful sketchbook or art journal out of that as well so like i'm using both of these in the middle of the book but you could just use these as separate little sweet art journals and you know especially like at this time it would be really nice uh, to gift them to family and friends as well or to have a little art party and everyone gets to make one of these type of little uh, journals it would be really nice so here you can see I have this card that I got from Walmart uh, particularly for this purpose and you can see the needle painting on these little birds and so you know obviously I really like embroidery and I really like needle painting as well I've tried it it takes a long time so um, I was really happy to put that in their book as well and then I also pulled the butterfly off and I was thinking of using it but you can see here that you can use just these cards if you have gift cards if you're getting Christmas cards they would be really nice to use either in these journals or as a journal themselves and like if you have a travels notebook you could make some little uh, sketchbooks from this type of thing and put those in there to use and I again I really recommend that if you are making one of these for a special purpose so you know if you if you're going to make like one every month and you don't really mind how they turn out that's fine but if you're making one for a special purpose don't skip this step like really take your time and really enjoy you know putting together these um, sort of folios and creating these really nice uh, different pages and you know different sizes and pockets and pullouts you might have old book pages or old wrapping paper um, bits of fabric color samples you might even have like old letters in a box or something things that you want to keep and you're not really sure how to use but you don't really want to get rid of them you can use them in something like this okay so I have my inside started and I'm pretty happy with that so then I put that to the side and I start thinking about the cover how big I want to create it so that I know how many more signatures to you know create and I also was looking at this um, so I got these composition books and then I was also looking at the gift bag to decide what to do and again you might have some of these laying around you might have um, cardboard you know, that you want to use instead of this but I just thought these were a really good size and shape and then um, you know you can use this for scrap paper and uh, so I'll show you what we're gonna do we basically fold both of these and then lay them into each other and use them to create a sturdier spine so along that line that I just pointed out I'm going to score so you just get a little tool it could be the back of like a fork or the back of a butter knife or something and you and I just use this little tool I think it's for um, pottery it's just got a little ball on the end and then you can see hopefully you can see that you can score that and you can fold a really crisp line also if you are having a hard time seeing it you can um, put the playback settings higher on the video so you can press the little gear there's a little settings gear down below and um, change the playback settings to 720 or you can hit the three dots above it if you're on your phone and change the playback settings to 720 and it'll be really crisp so I think you can see better um, what I'm doing there I just did the same thing on both journals flipped one around and put them inside each other and so now I'm just having a look uh, you know how much room that I have there so I know how many more signatures to make so I made two more uh, and then I am just getting the glue here and you can see I'm just taking the lid off I'm plopping it on and then I'm just getting that everywhere and you know making sure that that's solid solidly glued together and then I am going back to so while that's drying 
I go back to inside and what I want to use and how I want to create inside so I cut down one side and the bottom of this to create like to make it uh, again the front of a signature and I can make pockets from inside or I can line that or something else So you can see here that I, I um, have been working on the front cover and how I wanted to design that. And so um, again, this didn't end up being how I created the front cover, but I wanted to leave it in to show you the whole process. And then also there's snippets throughout it of each day um, we, at our old house was like sort of upstate. So we, we were in a valley. But you can see here, so this is what I'm doing for the inside cover. So I have just notched out, you know, where the spine is and everything. And I am using just some wrapping paper that I had from Walmart again. And I am using double-sided tape to put this in. And to be honest, it doesn't look great. I don't know if any of you have tips or tricks on how to, you know, lay down um, paper flat. I'd love to hear them because I'm always struggling with that. I've tried matte mediums and things and it never seems to work. So um, I think this is good enough for now and then I can just, you know, put pockets and things on top of it. So it does, won't matter too much. And so here you can see that across the spine, across the width of the spine, I need four holes because that's where we're going to put the top hole for our signatures. And it took me a few tries to get that right, but then um, down in you know halfway down we need four more holes and then towards the bottom we need so about an inch and a half from the bottom as well we need another four holes and that's where our signatures are going to be sewn in so I just take my all and then I have poked the holes through all you know through all of those places and so then I actually use a piece of paper and poke some holes in that as well because that's going to be my template to do the middle of the signatures. So once we have all the papers folded together, so you can see here this is the end of another day. But once we have all those papers folded together, uh, that's when we want to uh, create the, you know, we will use the template and we'll poke the holes in there and so that it all matches up with the inside cover. So I ended up including this paper as well. This was from a day we tried eco dyeing. It wasn't the greatest, but there were a couple of really nice markings on here. And I do have a video about this over on Heirloom Lux as well. So I had this old uh, Barnes and Noble bag and I thought that would be quite nice to include as well. And so you can see here there are some things that I've worked on off camera. So I've added this little uh, bag and I have put um, I actually stitched just hand stitched a, bit, a little bit a snippet of fabric on there and hopefully from here so here it is so you can see here 
uh, I'm just putting the template in and using that to help me figure out where I want to put the holes um, but for this step you can also uh, binder clip this together to keep it together um, I didn't do that here so I think that would have been a lot more helpful Okay, so it is another day and I am uh, threading the thread and we're going to finally stitch this whole thing together. Now for this you can use wax thread, but I'm just using the embroidery thread from Walmart. So, and you can see there that the eye, it's a bit tricky to get it through this uh, needle. So if you can, you want like a darning needle or something with a thicker, you know, with a larger eye. And it will just also be a stronger needle to put through as well. So hopefully you can follow me here. So I'm going through the, f the middle hole and then we're going through the first, you know, middle hole on the first row of holes in the uh, spine. And I'm going up to the top hole and uh, poking that back through and I am having a hard time getting it through because again I didn't uh, clip it all together so I actually I think I might turn the book upside down at some point to try and get it through properly so I am just sort of wriggling it through and I'm having a hard time so you can see here that I just turned the book upside down so we're still going through the top hole and I am just uh, you know making sure that's through and then I go back through the middle hole so by the end of this, we basically make a figure eight. It is a pretty simple stitch. So there's probably some uh, tutorials on YouTube that do it better than me. So you can just look up a pamphlet stitch, but basically, you know, you can see here that I'm using pliers to get it back through the middle hole there. Um, so it was struggling to come through. So we went through the middle, up through the top, back through the middle, and now we're going down to the bottom. And that's all. Now we can tie the two ends together. And I like to leave them long because then you can, you know, put a charm or something on them. So at this stage, I usually just like to check that everything's in there secure and that I didn't miss any, you know, anything. I'll leave it loose anywhere. So I just check all that and then we go on to the next signature. Okay, so obviously I skipped some parts here, but hopefully you hopefully you can see that you just do the same stitch as many times as you need to. And although it's quite a large book, it's not heavy at all. So, you know, there's quite a variety of papers in here, but there's not too many and they're all, you know, it's it's quite a nice weight. It's not heavy. I didn't put enough papers in here where it might last me three months or six months. I'm happy just to have a nice selection of papers. This wouldn't be like an everyday journal. It just might be for something special. Um, for example, you know, December daily. But again, you can, you know, fill this as full as you like. So you could keep adding papers. If you wanted this to last you a long time, um, you can just add more papers. And so that's it guys so this is part one uh, finished and then 
I will be back with part two. We will decorate the cover and make some pockets and everything like that. And then the next video after, you know, part two will be a Christmas gift guide. And then after that, we will be getting into December, hopefully like Vlogmas and um, some daily uh, sort of videos and watercolor videos. And we will work more in this book. So I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you soon. Bye.